The Monkey, the Shark, and the Washerman's Donkey Tanzanian Folk Tales Once upon a time, Kina, the monkey, and Papa, the shark, became great friends. And the monkey lived in an immense Miyuku tree, which grew by the margin of the sea, half its branches being over the water and half over the land. Every morning when the monkey was breast breakfasting on the kuyu nuts, the shark would put in an appearance under the tree and call out, throw me some food, my friend, with which request the monkey comply most willingly. This continued for many months until one day Papa said, Kina, you have done me many kindnesses. I would like you to go with me to my home so that I may repay you. How can I go, said the monkey. We land beasts do not we land beasts cannot go about in the water. Don't trouble yourself about that, replied the shark. I will carry you. Not a drop of water shall get on you. Oh all right, said Mr Kena, let's go. When they had gone about halfway the shark stopped and said, You are my friend. I will tell you the truth. Why, what is there to tell? asked the mon monkey with surprise. Well, you see, the fact is, our sultan is very sick, and we have been told by that the only medicine that will do him any good is a monkey's heart. Well, exclaimed Kima, you are very foolish not to tell me that before we started. How so? asked Papa. But the monkey was busy thinking up some means of saving himself, and made no reply. Well, said the shark anxiously, why don't you speak? Oh, I have nothing to say now. It's too late. But if you had told me this before we had started, I might have brought my heart with me. What? You haven't your heart here? Huh! Ejac exclaimed Kima. You don't know about us? When we go out, we leave our hearts in the trees and only go about with our, only our bodies. But I see you don't believe me. You think I'm scared. Come on, let's go to your home where you can kill me and search for my heart in vain. The shark did believe him, though, and exclaimed, Oh no, let's go back and get your heart. Indeed, no, protested, protested Kima. Let us go on to your home. But the shark insisted that they should go back, get the heart, and start afresh. At last, with a great apparent reluctance the monkey consented grumbling sulkily at the unnecessary trouble he was being put to when they got back to the tree he climbed up in a great hurry calling out wait there papa my friend while i get my heart and we'll start off properly next time when he had got well up amongst the branches he sat down and kept quite still after waiting what he considered to be a reasonable length of time the shark called come along kima but kima just kept still and said nothing a little while he called again. Oh, Kima, let's be going. At this, the monkey poked his head from among the, among the upper branches and asked in great surprise, Going? Where? To my home, of course. Are you mad? queried Kima. Mad? Why? What, why? what do you mean? cried Papa. What's the matter with you? said the monkey. Do you take me for a washerman's donkey? What peculiar... Peculiarly... Peculiarly... Peculiarity, that's a tongue twister, is there about a washerman's donkey. It is a creature that has neither heart nor ears. The shark, his curiosity, overcoming his haste, thereupon begged to be told the story of the washerman's donkey, which the monkey related as follows. A washerman owned a donkey of which he was very fond. One day, however, it ran away and took, upon, and took up its abode in the forest, where it led a lazy life and consequently grew very fat. At length, Soongra, the hare, by chance passed that way and saw Punda, the donkey. Now, the hare is the most cunning of all beasts. If you look at his mouth, you will see that he is always talking to himself about everything. So when Sungra saw Punda, he said to himself, My, this donkey is fat. Then he went and told Simba the lion. And Simba was 
just recovering from a severe illness, he was still so weak that he would not go hunting. He was consequently pretty hungry. Said Mr. Sungra, I'll bring enough meat tomorrow for both of us to have a great feast, but you'll have to do the killing. All right, good friend, exclaimed Simba joyfully. You're very kind. So the hare scampered off to the forest, found the donkey, and said to her in his most courtly manner, Miss Punda, I am sent to ask your hand in marriage. By whom? Simba the donkey. By Simba the lion. The donkey was greatly elated at this and exclaimed, Let's go at once. This is a first-class offer. They soon arrived at the lion's home, were cordially invited in, sat down. Sungura gave Simba the signal with his eyebrow to the effect that this was the promised feast and that he would wait outside. Then he said to Punda, I must leave you for a while to attend to some private business. You stay here and converse with your husband that is to be. As soon as Sungura got outside, the lion sprang at Punda and they had a great fight. Simba was kicked very hard and he struck with his claws as well as his weak health would, as well as his weak health would permit him. At last, the donkey threw the lion down and ran away to a home in the forest. Shortly after, the hare came back and called, Hi, Simba, have you got it? I have not got it, growled the lion. She kicked me and ran away, but I warned you that I made her feel pretty sore, though I'm not strong. Oh, well, remarked Sungra, don't put yourself out, out of the way about it. Then Sungra waited many days. Until the lion and the donkey were both well and strong when he said, What do you think now, Simba? Shall I bring you your meat? I, growled the lion fiercely, bring it to me. I will tear it in two pieces. So the hare went off into the forest where the donkey welcomed him and asked the news. You are invited again to call and see your lover, said Sungura. Oh dear, cried Punda. That day you took to me, he scratched me awfully. I'm afraid to go near him now. Ah, Pashaw, said Sungura, that's nothing. That's only Simba's way of caressing. Oh, well, said the donkey, let's go. So they started off again, but as soon as the lion caught sight of Punda, he sprang upon her and tore her in two pieces. When the hare came up, Simba said to him, take this meat and roast it. As for myself, all I want is the heart and ears. Thanks, said Sunda. Then he went away and roasted the meat in a place where the lion could not see him. And he took the heart and the ears and hit them. Then he ate all the meat he needed and put the rest away. Presently, the lion came to the him and said bring me the heart and ears where are they said the hare what does mean growled simba why didn't you know this was a washerman's donkey well what has that got to do with there being no heart or ears for goodness sake said simba aren't you old enough to know if this beast possessed a heart and ears it wouldn't have come back the second time of course the lion had to admit that sungura the hare was what what sungura the hare said was true and now said Kimu to the shark, you want to make a washerman's donkey of me? Get out of there and go home by yourself. You are not going to get me again and our friendship is ended. Goodbye, Papa.